And why, why this powwow is so important is that for 110 years, since the hanging of the 38 Dakota in downtown Mankato, Dakota people preferred to drive through Mankato and not stop for any reason. Amos Owen and his tribal council came to Mankato and visited Jim and the rest of us at the YMCA where Jim was the director. And we had a mini powwow and, and that kind of created an atmosphere of friendship and reconciliation right there in the beginning. I met Amos Owen in 1958 at Prairie Island and Amos had an ancestor who was hung here. Um, just like Vernon Ashley's uh, great grandfather. And uh, so I, I got very, very interested in it. And I thought if there's anything I could do to, in a positive way to help the Dakota people, I would do it. One thing led to another. I had a number of friends in Mankato who became interested too. Yeah, uh, Jim Buckley and Amos Owen and myself, um, uh, I guess you could say we were the founders of the powwow. Uh, Jim Buckley and I were jogging one night in early spring of 1972 and we were thinking of, trying to think of some kind of a project we could do with the Wiseman's Club. It's a, a service club connected with the YMCA here in Mankato. Uh, the reason we were thinking about doing something that would be uh, attractive to visitors is because the there was an international plowing contest being held in the south of Mankato and there are going to be uh, people from other countries here competing in the contests and, and all that sort of thing. Amos is a good friend of mine and why don't we talk to him about the possibility of putting on a powwow and Jim thought it was a good idea and so we first of all presented our case to the Wiseman's Club and they were reluctantly listened to us. They, they never knew much about Indians and, and they were concerned about how that would, how the public would react, and that sort of thing. But they went along with it. And then I called Amos Owen and didn't take him but one second to say, all right, well, I'll be there. I'll, we'll start our meetings right away and I'll contact uh, other leaders from the other tribes and we'll get something going. The three of us uh, formed, the, I guess, the nucleus of it. And uh, then Amos' wife, I own, and his brother-in-law, Wally Wells, and Gertrude, his wife, Norman and Edith Crooks, uh, uh, Amos and Rose Crooks, Big Dave Larson, and uh, Chief Wabasha and his wife, Vernell, were composed the uh, committee that we had. And that committee, and I, as I look back on it now, uh, was a committee of dedicated people who never debated anything, never argued. They just came up with ideas and they worked out the, their thoughts, the, the ideas they had into action. And uh, as we got closer closer and closer to the powwow time, there got to be a feeling of euphoria. I could just feel it uh, with the, these Indian folks. I mean, this was this is big because it's the first time in 110 years had Indians felt safe c coming to Mankato. And they really weren't so sure they were going to be safe this time but they wanted to try it. And uh, the word reconciliation wasn't used, but at the same time, that's when I look back, that's what it was. That was a step in the right direction as far as reconciliation was concerned. Well, I think it means quite a bit. I, I asked what a Dakota friend of mine a few years ago, after he'd participated in these powwows for a while, well, how he felt about the powwow from a Dakota perspective. And he said coming back to Mankato, as free people was like, and he went like this, like wiping a, fall, a, a veil of false guilt away. And that, I think, was speaking for all of Dakota because I, they, I feel that they all felt that way pretty much. Well, Amos saw this as a real chance for bringing about a, a sense of uh, reconciliation uh, amongst the white people and the Indian people. And, uh, and many other things have happened as a result of these powwows and it really has brought the different cultures together. And so Amos, if he were alive today, he'd be very proud of uh, what's happened. I have two friends in Mankato, one by the name of Bud Lawrence and the other one by the name of Jim Buckley. And Jim Buckley was the director of the YMCA, and Bud was a member of that. They both worked together very closely, and they got the idea then that they wanted to put on a powwow because there's so many people coming th from throughout the world. So, uh, 1972, we set up power. We went into Mankato. <clears throat> the feelings before, 
has changed uh, quite a bit since that time because before 1972, we go through Mankato late at night. We never stop in Mankato. Our people, you know, go to the powwows or go into ceremony somewhere out west. We go through Mankato in the dead of night. We didn't want people to know that we were in Mankato. The feeling was strong because the, they had that feeling of the Indian people were not welcome in Mankato. And 72, when we went into Mankato, even some of the people, there are members of a club that's organized and they called the Vidyakantu Club in Mankato today. They themselves came out and said that that the Indians were coming into town and the people went home, locked up their homes so that you know, the Indians would not come in. These are some of the things that we ran across on our first trip into Mankato. But uh, before that, we, I worked with Bud Lawrence for maybe 10 years before that, so I got to know him well enough that I could share many of the things that I felt. And he understood that uh, why we came into Mankato was to try to make better relationship with our people and with the non-Indian people in the city of Mankato. Since that time, we've come a long ways. Our people today are welcome into the city of Mankato.